Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is in nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to be taking a look at Independence Day, probably my favorite childhood movie of all time. This is a movie where aliens invade on the 4th of July in 1996. It's awesome. <laughs> and for those of you who are not from the United States, um, don't think you have to be American to enjoy this movie. Because after all... The 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday. Yeah. In this movie, nuclear weapons are used um, to uh, thwart the alien invasion. But at the end of this video, we'll be answering the question, can nuclear weapons realistically defeat aliens? Let's look at the strength of the aliens. They have a massive mothership over 500 kilometers long serving as their command base, larger than even the Death Star. And this mothership transported 36 spacecraft, each 25 kilometers long, with enough firepower to destroy cities. And each of these carried hundreds of small attack craft about the same size as a fighter jet. This is quite the sizable force, um, enough that you would think that could realistically wage war against every nation on Earth, which is great because some, some of these movies you just have one or two small ships and you're wondering, can they actually invade and occupy an entire planet? But it looks like these guys potentially could. Let's see their primary weapon in action. <laughs> this scene gets me every time. Based on those clips, this alien weapon appears to be some type of directed energy weapon chain reaction sort of thing that just keeps expanding outward. And it hits everything the full 25 kilometers of the ship. I mean, that circle of devastation, and it keeps expanding outward. So, this would actually make it more devastating than the most powerful nuclear weapons by a long shot, if you look at the amount of total destruction that we see in this scene. Now, that begs one question, though. The aliens clearly use some type of anti-gravity thing to hold them up, but wouldn't its mere presence just being this close to those cities just the opposite reaction of the anti-gravity just destroy the city anyway without even the need to fire any sort of weapon like that. <laughs> and the weapon's limitations, it apparently can't get through the plot armor of Air Force One, and the explosion is kind enough to slow down so your dog can hide with you in your broom closet. That, that scene cracks me up every time. And also... Do the alien ships need to get that close to Earth, or can they just basically bomb the cities from orbit with that weapon? Let's see what happens when the humans try to fight back. And it looks like they have this refreshing, minty, wintergreen looking shield they got going on to protect themselves from missiles. Though against a craft that size, I doubt AMRAMs or Sidewinders, the standard missiles, air-to-air uh, -air missiles that you have on an F-18, would do much to a ship of that size. They need to use something a lot bigger than that. Alright, now they are going to nuke the aliens. Cool, they are using B-2 stealth bombers. Man, when I was a kid, I thought those things were alien ships just because of how sleek and cool they looked. They're getting very close. 
Wow. <laughs> you would think they would have gotten all the permissions squared away before they got close to the thing they're attacking. You never actually see it in this movie, but I always wondered if the bomber um, actually escaped its own attack. Yeah, look, look how close they are, man. So yeah, they are definitely danger close, but let's, let's talk about the weapon. The B-2's primary weapon is the B-83 nuclear bomb. Now this is typically an unguided bomb, not attached to a cruise missile, and it has a yield of 1.2 megatons, which makes it a pretty powerful nuclear weapon. The average is... We're talking on the order of 400 to 800 kilotons, and this one's a good bit more powerful. Now, B-2 bombers are armed with cruise missiles, but those are typically conventional weapons, but it's probably not unheard of for the purpose of this movie to go ahead and, you know, have a, have a nuclear weapon on a cruise missile. But cruise missile-based weapons are typically smaller on the order of five for ta five kilotons for tactical or 150 kilotons for the uh, larger more strategic ones so this is a bit weird but that's I, I put it in the category of acceptable breaks from reality um, after all it could be modified in some way if you are familiar with bombers at all please leave me a comment um, I, I don't claim to be an expert on on bombers or anything like that Though they could just launch the cruise missiles from several miles away rather than getting that close in with a bomber. But that's just my thoughts. No good. So it looks like the nuke wasn't powerful enough in the movie. But would it work realistically? Well, I actually highly doubt it. And that's because we are dealing with an interstellar warship. To get to Earth, this spacecraft had to travel, who knows, hundreds, thousands of light years, probably at a significantly high percentage of the speed of light, if not actually faster than light. And when you're going that fast, there's a lot of energy in play here. In fact, a 10 milligram grain of space dust that you could be flying through would have kinetic energy of over one kiloton and this spaceship would be bombarded by many millions if not billions of these things over the course of an interstellar journey and that's just at 99 percent of the speed of light if this thing's going faster than light which it probably is using some alien sci-fi um, those shields would have to be designed just to be much tougher than that. So, no, I don't think the uh, a, a nuclear weapon would realistically penetrate the alien's shield. In fact, the entire payload of a B-2 stealth bomber, which would include 16 of these b83 1.2 megaton nuclear weapons and all the conventional bombs you see there that still wouldn't be enough to get through the shield because that's how powerful those alien spacecraft is it's crazy to think about something like that what if the aliens have no shields in this movie jeff goldblum uses a windows 95 computer to hack the alien mothership and implant a virus to bring down the shield. Now that is wrong for a whole mess of reasons, but <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's see what happens. Hey, they got him. All right, so we can see those same AMRAAM air-to-air missiles actually cause some superficial damage against the alien craft. And those things aren't even known for their armor penetration, so the alien plating's pretty weak, um, and it makes you really question the alien's design. First, they have to get to point-blank range where they're gonna be relatively vulnerable to attack the cities. Then, they only have a single point vulnerability, and that's their shields with no backups, vulnerable to a virus from Windows 95, and 
there's no backup countermeasure for uh, to protect them. And I'm referring to protecting them for interstellar flight. Well, if they, ha they have like a loss of power or something like that, they're kind of screwed when they're <laughs> traveling through deep space at very high speeds. So, yeah, that's really poor engineering for sure. Now, would a nuke destroy the alien ship in this case without shields? Well, maybe. All right, here's a simulation of a nuclear blast. Uh, we're over Houston, just like they were um, when they used the B-2 scene. This is a B-83 nuclear weapon yield of 1,200 kilotons or 1 1.2 megatons. So this red circle right here that I have flashing, um, that's the heavy blast damage radius. That range is probably what's reliable, gonna completely destroy the alien ship with no shields. And then these rings extending outward are just more moderate levels. So heavy blast radius of 2.1 kilometers, that's probably enough to wipe out a sizable chunk of the alien craft. Now that's not going to completely destroy the thing because it's obviously at 25 kilometers across. But if you hit it in a certain spot, right there, right next to that fin-like structure, that would be enough to take that chunk out easily, which is probably where the front of the, of the craft is, and it would probably do enough damage to get the ship the cr to crash. Um, and the crash would do far more damage to the enemy ship than the nuclear weapon actually would. But, hey, what do you say? The bigger they are, the harder they fall. So, yeah, no shields. You hit it right there. That ship's coming down. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Here's how they take down the alien ship in the movie. And that takes down the entire alien ship. This chain reaction thing goes out the full 25 kilometers. Man, you would think that design flaw would make them even more likely to just want to you know, just blast the cities from orbit or something. <laughs> Maybe it has absurdly short range. Who knows? Here's basically what this scene reminds me of. Yep. Cartoon logic saves the day. Good job. What about the mothership? Well, Jeff Goldblum's commandeered alien spacecraft was equipped with a small tactical nuclear weapon. Tactical nuclear weapon, five kilotons or less, maybe even about one kiloton. Even without shields, that would do nothing to a 550 kilometer wide spacecraft. Let's see what the inside of this thing looks like though. That looks like the thing that they're gonna dock in. I mean, it might be able to destroy that thing if they launch it at that, but not much else. There's the aliens down there. So this brings up an interesting point. This isn't like setting off a nuke in space. It's just like setting off the nuke on Earth or another planet because this spacecraft clearly has gravity and clearly has oxygen because those aliens are just sitting there without a spacesuit or anything. So it would be comparable to just setting off a nuke in the atmosphere just like anywhere else. Always got to intimidate your opponents. Here it comes. Oh man, you hit the alien air traffic controller. Poor guy. That is a high stress job with long hours, little respect, having to constantly tell all those planes where to go, and now he takes a missile to the face. Let's see what this bomb actually does. Of course it has a timer on it. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. It's like the Death Star exploding. Mm. No, not a small tactical nuke at all. <laughs> uh, 
Either that little teeny tiny nuke is many billions of times more powerful than all the nukes in the world, or they happen to hit that alien ship at their weak spot. Gonna go with option two, though how they knew it was the weak spot is beyond me. Also, kind of weird that the weak spot would be right next to where a bunch of spacecraft dock. What if one of the aliens, you know, is a drunk driver or something and runs into it and blows up the entire ship that way? <laughs> yeah, um, so must be a lot of, I don't know, hyperdrive fuel or whatever alien faster than light machine used to uh, cause it to explode like that. <laughs> Well, that just about sums up Independence Day. So, yes, it looks like you can defeat aliens with nuclear weapons if they have really questionable engineering designs and tactics and they let you go in and blow their stuff up and they're somehow vulnerable to Windows 95 with zero backup systems. Let me know what you think of that down in the comments below. And hey, if you like this video, please join me on my journey to a clean nuclear energy future by liking, subscribing, and commenting. Thank you very much. See you next time.